what kind of um, take rate are you seeing on the Escalade and the CT4? I guess on the Escalade, which is the main one you've had out there now with the second generation system. Uh, Escalade is around 50%. It's, okay. it's pretty heavy. So we'll stage here in this lane. You can go ahead and engage adaptive cruise. We'll set it at about 60 miles an hour. And uh, actually you're in super cruise already. So once the light bar is green, you can go ahead and, and let go. So I'll walk you through this first auto lane change. We should be able to get through three of them, but I'll walk you through this first once so you know what's going on. Um, I briefly mentioned previously before we got in the vehicle that we have these radars um, around the entire vehicle to paint the picture where vehicles are in relation to us. So you still got the one long range radar in the front and the short range radars on the corners, four corners? Yep. So we picked up that vehicle passing us. We maintained it, um, maintained its location. Now it's in front of us, it's a target. As he slows down, we're gonna start encroaching upon him, right? Um, and that's where auto lane chain's gonna make yeah, the yeah, decision. Hey, I wanna do 60, this guy's only doing 55. Let's change lanes as I see an open lane. Let's change around them. So from start to finish, you're going to see the messaging is telling you what, what it's doing. You also get the audible beep. Now so it's going to you know. stay in this lane. It's not going to change back to the other lane. It is going back. to change oh, back. Oh, is it? Oh, yep. okay. Oh, even better. If there were traffic in this lane, you would hang in that lane okay. until there's an opening. But we don't want to keep you in that lane if we don't have to. Okay. So if there's an opening in this lane, we will move you back to your original lane. Good. You programmed it with proper lane discipline. I like that. Now there may be different scenarios that you could run into. For example, you may be coming up upon slower traffic and the left lane may be congested, but the right lane is open. We'll also auto lane change to the right. Okay. We will prefer the left first. If that's not open, then we will look at the right and we'll, we'll do a lane change in the right lane. Also, we'll utilize auto lane change to get you out of a lane that may be ending. So if you're in a lane that's ending, say, half a mile or a mile ahead of you, will auto lane change you into a valid, the next valid lane so to is keep it you going. Reading the uh, the signs to indicate you know lane ending things like that. Nope, that's or all known it, in or the or map. Or just from the map. So okay. we have a precision lidar based map yep. that's stored in the vehicle. We know number of lane lines, road curvature, etc. So we know what lane you're in, and we know when lanes are ending. So what if there's um, a construction zone? You know, so something that's not on your map, uh, you know, and a lane is blocked off for construction or something what happens in that scenario. So we advise our customers not to utilize super crews in construction areas. We state that in the owner's manual. Sure. I think we have some other information out there in the getting to know your vehicle documents. There's just so many irregularities that could occur in, in a construction zone. Lanes could be shifted. You know, you could be brought over to the other side um, of opposing traffic. So we advise our customers not to utilize super crews at all in a construction zone. Once the construction is completed, um, we do get notified by the Department of Transportation for whatever state it's in, and that notifies us to go uh, remap it. And once it's remapped, we'll load that latest and greatest map into the vehicle. We can do that over the air without the driver even knowing. We were previously doing that about once quarterly. Um, we want to get the freshest map out as quickly as possible, so we're almost on a monthly cadence now. Okay. And those are all done in the background. You don't even know they're occurring. We're just automatically loading. Uh, that latest map to your your vehicle over the air on about a monthly cadence, right? Now. You still using Usher for the maps? Yes. And how many roads are how many miles of roads are mapped now? Still about two hundred thousand. Two hundred thousand miles of divided highways in the U.S. and Canada. Okay. Let's uh, let's go ahead and use the second lane from the bottom here. Um, so the one you're in right now. And go ahead and, uh, when you get the chance, go ahead and use set speed of like 55 to start with. If you want to engage first and then, and then sit down to 55, that's okay. Right, so we've got the steering wheel icon that you should, you know, you saw last time as well. Yep. Uh, go ahead and try and engage Super Cruise. Yep, and you were in the center of the lane, so it went straight to green. Um, you know, that's one of the things we talked about with our enhanced Super Cruise that was really a, a, a step forward in customer usability is the ability, to, if they're not in the center of the lane, we go blue, and then once they get center, they go yep. green, right? Um, okay, so so this is Super Cruise with trailering, right? So for people familiar with Super Cruise, it should feel very comfortable, very familiar, um, and intuitive. Um, if you want to, go ahead and bump your speed up to like 70 as an example, and we'll go ahead and do a lane change maneuver to our left. Um, and so the difference is gonna be now, right, so you can flip the turn signal, but you're gonna to have to manually do the lane change, right? So you're gonna go green to blue, and then once you're centered again, it's gonna go back to green. Right, so very intuitive, easy, 
it's not already back to Just green. like it has been from the beginning, except with except an extra 5,000 pounds. Now you get a 5,000 pound trailer behind you. Um, this camo doesn't help with some of the, you know, the baffling we're hearing or whatever, but, um, you know, it feels, you know, we, we think we're, we're very happy with how it feels planted. You know, like any time you trailer, the most important thing is the proper trailer distribution of weight, right? Yep. Um, that's true if you're in Super Cruise or if you're driving manually. Yeah. Obviously, you know, Super Cruise is a feature that's kind of best experienced in the wild, I guess I'll say. Yeah. Um, you know, with the time we had today, you know, without the sure. other stuff going on, we obviously limited where we could do that. But we're, we're really looking forward, you know, we think our, our, you know, everything from our software to integration to Cal Team has done a really good job. We're, we're really excited to, you know, to see this coming on the Sierra. Yeah, I mean, the ability to do this, you know, when you're towing a trailer, I think, you know, is, is actually going to be a real benefit. Um, I mean, I've, I've always been, I've always had, kind of had this feeling you know, from the first time I tried it on the CT6 that, um, you know, it, it, this kind of system reduces driver workload in some respects, but because you still have to watch the road, um, it actually increases cognitive load in other ways because um, humans are not good at supervising automation it's just, it's just a reality but you know when you're also keeping an eye on the trailer you know actually reducing the workload in this way you know and also being able to monitor what's going on with the trailer at the same time i think i think it might actually be a really good balance for something like this and we do think the driver retention system is a really critical component of that keeping the driver engaged as, yeah. oh, as no, an absolutely. active participant in the driving process, right? Yeah, I, I don't think any, you know, I don't think any of these types of systems should ever be done without a driver monitor system. As I was telling Jeff at the end of the, the previous session, um, you know, I think, you know, once you start putting these driver monitor systems in there, the companies should also be looking at, you know, potentially just using it across the board. As, a, as you know, to detect any kind of distracted driving or um, you know, any any loss of attention by the driver, um, you know, it's you know, it's a it's a much more reliable system than you know a torque sensor or anything like that, and I think it would actually have a lot more effect on reducing distracted driving than any laws out there. You know, telling people they can't look at their phones while they're driving is one thing, but to actually have something that you know monitors for that and you know actually actively does something to help prevent it, I think would be far superior.